Hello class, today we're gonna to be talking about composite transformations, which means more than one transformation. In the past, you've only done one transformation. You either did one translation, or you did one reflection, or you did one rotation. But today we're gonna to work on doing multiple transformations on the same shape. So I have this shape here, which is an irregular polygon or a convex quadrilateral however which way you want to describe it. And then we have this point A that's on the polygon. So this is our pre-image shape and this is our pre-image point that we're going to focus on. And we're going to reflect it across the line BC. So here's BC. Now to reflect in Sketchpad, I'm just going to select the entire shape and then the point, and I'm going to do a transformation, which is of course reflection. When I reflect it, as you can see, the new figure has been reflected across the line BC. And the new point is now called A prime because it's the image of A. Then I'm going to construct another line that is parallel to BC but goes through a point that's not on BC. And that is um, a different line. So this line is parallel. Doesn't matter where it is, it still has the same slope as BC. And now I'm going to mark this as the line of reflection and I'm going to reflect my uh, image across that line and let's see what occurs. So now I have this new figure and I'm going to change the color so that you can see the difference between the um, two. I'm going to keep them, I'm going to change them all colors so you won't think Okay, so we have the pre-image and then the image and then the image of the image. So the question is, how does this shape relate to this shape? What transformation did I, can I do to get from this shape to another shape? Well, first of all, my first question is, how do these two shapes relate? Yes, they are congruent. A transformation on top of another transformation is only an isometry if the transformations were isometries. So these are all isometries because we only did isometric transformations. So this is an isometry as well because this shape change keeps the same size and length and angles and all that good stuff. But what's the transformation that resulted from here to here? Well, let's see, it looks like it could be a translation and you're absolutely correct. If I wanna figure out what that translation is, I have to first, let's take a look at the coordinates of A and let's take the look at the coordinates of A double prime. So I'm going to look at the coordinates of A and A double prime and see if I can compare the two. So let's see what happens. Here are the x coordinates. And then here are the y coordinates. Okay, and let's take a look at the difference between the x and the y coordinates. So I'm going to calculate. I'm going to say a minus a double prime for the x coordinates. And I'm going to say y minus y double a for the coordinates. And I get two different y values. So the difference between the x's and the y's are here. But look what happens as I change the position of the a value, the a prime and the a double prime changes, but look what happens up here. These don't change, and that's because um, we're not changing the reflection. If I were to move this, then these values would change, but as long as I move A's, the values will not change. So the transformation that occurred from here to here, from the original pre-image to the second image is a translation, as you can see. And if I want to figure out how I did that, I can go and see. You can look and see that. 
So let's see, let me mark, since this is a translation, let me see if I can use a vector. So this is my initial point, and this is going to be my terminal point, and I am going to mark the vector. And then I'm going to take this shape, and I'm going to change it to a different color so we can really see the difference. I'm going to take this shape, and I'm going to translate it based off that same vector from point A to double prime and look what happens. It ends up right on top of here. So actually the reflection across two parallel lines is also um, a trans one single translation. So the, the composite transformation are reflections across two parallel lines and they all are the same as one translation. Now here we're going to start back with the original figure and instead of translating across two parallel lines we're going to reflect we're going to, I mean, not translate, instead of re transforming it, reflecting it across two parallel lines, we're going to reflect it across two intersecting lines. So I'm going to actually make another line, and it's going to intersect the first line. And the point of intersection is this point right here. And let's say I'm going to call this point D. Okay. And so first and foremost, I can move the point or I can move the line wherever I want. So I'm going to take my figure and I am going to reflect it across the first line. Okay, I'm going to change that color so you can see it reflected across the first line. And then, just so I won't confuse you too, I'm going to move this line closer, as you can see, because I moved the line closer, the reflection got closer. And this new point, of course, is A prime. And then I'm going to reflect the image across that line. And change that to a different color. And the question is, how do I get from here to here? What single transformation produced the same result as this double transformation? Hmm, well, let's see. Well, first, let me measure um, the distance between A, D, and the distance between D, A double prime D. Oh, what do you notice? The distance between a D, a double prime D is the same as the distance between a D. Hmm, let's also look at something else. Let's look at the, the measure of the angle between a D and a double prime. So, construct an angle, oh, if it will let me. I'm actually going to get rid of this. Hide. Make this dashed. Okay, what's the measure of this angle right here? Well, let's see. measure that angle and I get 107.5. So what would happen if I would take this figure and rotate this figure about point D, a measure of 107.5 degrees clockwise? Okay, so how do we do that? Well first we have to measure, this is the point we want to rotate, and this is the figure we want to rotate. I'm going to change its color so we can really see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to do a rotation, and it's going to say, okay, I know this is the point of rotation D, but do you want me to rotate it a certain number of degrees or based off the angle? I'm going to select this angle right here. So it's going to rotate the figure around ADA, and guess where it ends up? You're right, it ends up 
on this shape. So another way to define a rotation is by basically taking this um, their pre-image and reflecting it across two original points, two original, two intersecting lines. And our last transformation combination is reflecting across one line. And we're going to reflect this image across this line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to translate it by the vector EG. So now I'm going to take this figure here and I'm going to change the color because we're going to translate it. And I'm going to translate it using that vector from E to G. And that's what happened. And then we have this picture, which I'm going to call it a different color. So now, as you can see, if I change the translation vector, the distance between this point and this point is going to be the same as the distance between this point and this point, the corresponding point. Well, relatively the same, very close to the same. Yeah, now it's the same because that was how I translated the figure. But my question is, what's the relationship between this line, this figure, and this figure? What kind of transformation occurred to go from here to here? Let's see. Some of you said a reflection, and you're absolutely correct. The question is, around which line did I reflect this point? Because I, as I change this position, or as I change this coordinate, these two change. So what line did I reflect it across? Well, actually, there is no one line that I reflected it across. I actually did a reflection, and then I did a translation. A reflection and a translation, and this is what we call a glide transformation. A glide transformation. So if you take a look at your notes, your notes will have information about a glide transformation, which is a result of a reflection and a translation. That's all, folks.